are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Small Business Success in the Sun Sunshine State. This webinar is part of CCIQ's Queensland Small Business Week series in partnership with the Queensland Government and features a very special guest, Peter Fielding, CEO of Burley Brewing Company. My name is James Flaherty and I'm your facilitator for today's webinar. As the craft beer craze continues to sweep Australia, Gold Coast couple Brennan and Peter Fielding are ensuring that the Queensland flag is flying high with their Burley Brewing Company beers. Located on the idyllic Gold Coast, Burley Brewing Company has gone from humble beginnings to be gracing the shelves of bottle shops and pubs across the southeast. It's a truly great Queensland small business success story and we're pleased to have Peter here today to host a webinar and share some of those secrets of their success. Welcome Peter. Thank you very much, it's great to be here. First things first, congratulations. I believe uh, the Burley Brewing Company had a big win last week at the Telstra Business Awards. We did indeed. Very unexpected but um, very exciting for the the whole crew to, um, you know, a bit of a, I guess, a big tick to say we're on the right path, which is um, hugely rewarding. We came away with the um, Telstra Queensland Small Business of the Year Award and then um, before the night was over we were back up on stage and named the Telstra Queensland Business of the Year. So very, very exciting um, time for us. Look, f fantastic news and congratulations to everyone here at CCIQ. It really is great to see a, a CCIQ member you know, picking up prestigious awards uh, across the state and from a personal perspective as somebody who is very partial to a drop of Duke Lager or, or your beautiful 28 Pale Ale, it's really fantastic to have you uh, here today. Before we start, a couple of things to help you all get the best out of today's webinar. It will last around 30 minutes um, and we'll have a Q&A at the end. So you can enter questions for Peter using the text box that you should all have on screen at any time and we'll answer the questions um, at the end of the, the presentation. I know we've already had some questions in, so that's a, that's a great start already. So let's start, uh, let's start and let's get under the skin of the Burley Brewing Company. Um, and let's begin with, uh, with your, yours and Brennan's background, Peter. And why did you start Burley Brewing? Who wouldn't start a brewery on the Gold Coast? <laughs> Look, uh, fundamentally, my, my, um, my dream growing up, I guess, and what I always wanted to do was to create something and, and to run uh, a business. My mum tells me that when I was little and she asked me the question of what I wanted to be, I told her that I wanted to carry a briefcase and be the boss. So it was, it's been in me for a while, a desire to, to build something. I didn't really know what. Uh, I didn't have a strong passion around a particular um, product or service, uh, but I knew I wanted to create a business. So my, I suppose, um, education and early career path was designed around developing the skills uh, that I would need when I hopefully one day went on to, to, uh, to build a business. Um, so I started out, I went to university and did uh, law and practiced as a lawyer in corporate law for a number of years before heading to the, uh, to the States to do an MBA as hopefully another step towards uh, building a business. Uh, Brennan, on the other hand, boy from Hawaii, um, was equally interested in um, making things, but more in a physical sense. Uh, he loves to make things from scratch, whether it's food, alcohol, furniture, <laughs> that type of person. So he, uh, he was studying science, doing uh, physics and chemistry at, uh, at college and um, wanting to become a brewer and was very fortunate to get an opportunity to work in a, a German brewery in the States and so was able to essentially say goodbye to his studies before he finished uh, and, and latch on to this uh, dream opportunity for him and uh, very quickly he started to make a name for himself in, in the brewing world and uh, worked in a number of operations and, and was uh, winning awards from, from quite early on. So our worlds collided, if you like, when I was in Hawaii studying um, for my MBA and uh, it became a bit of a, I don't know, we, we just kind of knew without really uh, ever asking each other the question, it just became a part of our conversation that we were going to build a, a craft uh, brewery and that we wanted to go home to, uh, to Australia to do it. Um, we had an, an opportunity to uh, run a brewery in the States. Brennan came home from work one day in the brewery that he was working in with a bit of a long face and was devastated to inform me that the, the parent company that ran that brewery had filed for bankruptcy. And um, I, very quickly my reaction was actually very positive and I, I 
jumped around saying that great and he thought I'd gone crazy. Uh, but what, what I said to him was, you know, let's try and find a way to, to buy it. And it just seemed like a ridiculous thing to say. We were, we were in the early stages of our married life. We had no money, <laughs> but we had a big dream, I guess. And we did manage to, um, with, with help from others, uh, put together a small group to actually buy the brewery and, and uh, you know, a fantastic um, training wheels for us for, for what we eventually wanted to do to, to when we built um, Burley Brewing. It also gave us an opportunity to very clearly um, come to terms with what was important to us in a business, what we wanted to create when we did build our own brewery, uh, what kind of place we wanted it to be and we, what we wanted it to be all about and very importantly where our ethics sat in the whole spectrum of, um, of business. So that was kind of the, the path towards, um, towards Burley Brewing. So you obviously had your passion um, and you had a plan. How important for our, our listeners today is it to, to make sure that as you're, you're developing and building your business, you have the passion and the plan and have those working together? Yeah, look, we spent a long time uh, on our plan. Um, we, and I guess, look, partly that I'm just that type of person. I wanted to plan, but at the same time, we knew we wanted to build a brewery of a certain size, and it was a, a size that would be one heck of a risk if it didn't work. Uh, so we, we put a lot of effort into researching the market and, uh, and putting a plan um, together um, where the brewery would be, what type of equipment it would have, where the equipment would come from, what beers we would make, what, how we would make them, how we would sell them, where we would sell them who we'd need to help us, everything you can imagine, what were the risks, um, what did we think were going to be our kind of competitive advantages and, and so on. And it turned into uh, quite a hefty document. Uh, that plan though came into its own when it came time to seek funding for the, for the brewery because I think it was pretty clear and obvious to those involved that, that we had a well thought out plan uh, and that we could show um, that we knew what we had to implement. At the same time, we were very, very passionate about it, of course, and and that helped us to um, tell the story. I think where the passion really had to kick in, though, was to actually in putting the plan uh, into action, because um, in many ways, for us, actually starting was one of the biggest stumbling um, blocks and, and one of the most difficult things to overcome. We both. Uh, had you know well-paying jobs. Um, we both were on career paths. Uh, we had two small children, and literally implementing the plan involved us um, essentially throwing all that away and uh, standing at the top of a cliff and jumping off. And and the plan was our safety net. That that was you know the the catch us really. Um, we were definitely in danger of not even um, putting the plan into action and staying in the planning stage forever because it's very, very scary to, to jump off that cliff, take the whole family with you. Uh, and, and so we were fortunate in hindsight to um, have had a few things happen that, that gave us a little nudge and, and helped us jump off. And um, one of those things was a, was a friend of ours saying um, just over dinner, hey guys, you've been talking about this brewery a lot, can you either <laughs> Shut up <laughs> or do it. Uh, and, and that gave us a very clear message that perhaps the planning phase had gone on for a little bit too long. Uh, we also got a hold of a of a easy read business book which, written by Richard Branson that was called Screw It, Let's Do It. And so um, even more than the, the content of the book itself, that little phrase became something that we could latch on to and, and kind of when the doubt set in of whether we really could do it um, or whether we should do it, we were able just to to say to each other very succinctly, "Screw it, let's do it," and, and that meant you know we've we've done the research, we know we want to do it, we're very passionate about it, and if we just don't get going, it it uh, it won't happen. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, uh, our children were getting a little bit older and and old enough to be very aware that uh, Brennan was commuting from the Gold Coast to Brisbane for his brewing job at that time, and he left early in the morning and came home late at night and, and they were starting to ask questions about why they didn't get to see Dad very much. And certainly for my part, I think that gave me the, the, all the impetus I needed to say, look, 
we just need to build this brewery on the Gold Coast in our own backyard so that um, you know the commute becomes five minutes and not an hour and you can you can actually see the kids again uh, and that really has become even a, a driving force for me overall. I want to provide more jobs like that for people um, in our community. And so the passion uh, and the plan definitely go hand in hand all the way along, not only to get started but to keep going during the times when you think, oh gosh, I could so quit today. <laughs> so you've, you've made the decision sort of six, seven years ago, it's time to, to jump off the cliff. What was the process like between actually taking the plunge and then get into the stage where you're ready to pour your first beer from uh, from Burley Brewing. Definitely not overnight success. Um, we that well the process for building a, a, a brewery that of the scale that we did, uh, which is really you know building a manufacturing plant from uh, an empty building and a concrete floor, um, it took a year. So from when we signed the lease and. and uh, uh, you know that was a big obligation to take on in and of itself uh, to when we actually had our first beer um, coming out the door of the brewery it was actually 12 months and it was 12 months of full on work uh, we we did a lot of it ourselves we had to we put the, the funds into really the important stuff the equipment and and so on um, which meant that building bar furniture and uh, painting and so on we, we had to do ourselves to make things stretch and uh, you know in the end though that makes it probably even more rewarding because there's so much of us in in, uh, in what we did and in that in that year you've obviously got a great deal of red ink going on the balance sheet the the ventures you know, the ventures still there it's obviously got to be a bit of a, a, a stressful time just how good was it when that first beer was was poured in the brewery yeah, the bad part is I had to give it to someone else. I wanted to drink it myself. I needed a beer by then. <laughs> Look, it was very, uh, very exciting. We had a bit of an unconventional launch. Um, there was a, a local radio station running a fundraiser for the uh, Gold Coast hospitals uh, a little bit before we were ready to open, and they were auctioning off money you can't buy opportunities, and we thought. Well, what, you know, we've got something we can offer. We can offer someone um, they can pay some money to the kids' hospital and in return get uh, a party in a brewery that isn't even open yet. So uh, that was good, and it gave us the date that we had to be open by. Um, we still weren't quite ready, though. I, I vividly remember uh, the day that they were all arriving for this party. We were actually still uh, filtering our first beer, uh, even though Brennan had brewed on many breweries. Of course, there's this new equipment and new stuff, and there's there's glitches that you didn't plan for. So uh, he was still busily getting kegs ready down the back of the brewery and I was welcoming this group in the front door uh, and finally, it felt like forever, but finally a uh, phone call came and he said, good, go pour now. <laughs> and I turned around to pour a beer and realised that I'd never poured one in my life and didn't actually even know how to do it. So it was a, as much as it was a, an exciting day, it was, uh, it was stressful but in hindsight you know, very funny and we got through it and it, the first of many stressful slash funny experiences uh, in, the, in the last six years. Uh, and in the process of becoming a business and, and, you know, even with the best plan in the world, not everything's going to go right all the time. Um, are there any examples from, from Burley Brewing where, you know, you've, you've made a mistake and then gone on to learn from that? Oh gosh, there's, there's, um, there's many. <laughs> um, and Look, they, they probably happen on a daily basis, to be honest. Um, in the very um, early days, um, in, just in terms of ingredients, we had a plan for where we were going to be sourcing some of our uh, malted barley from. It was a particular type of malted barley that Brennan wanted to use. Uh, the downside was that it, it uh, came from uh, overseas, from South America, and uh, we, we, we didn't realise that was a downside at the time, but we ordered uh, a full container of, of malted barley to arrive at the time that we wanted to do our first uh, production runs. And uh, you know, after a couple of months on the water, we were very excited for it to arrive at the brewery, opened the doors, and uh, all the malt was mouldy. Um, not a time for celebration, let me tell you. Uh, but it very quickly cemented, um, I suppose, uh, one of the ideals that we, we really did hold dear anyway, but, but we obviously needed to act on it a bit more, and that was local first. So 
from, from that day on, our approach has been to source everything from as close to home as we possibly can, um, even if it costs us a little bit more uh, up front because over the longer term uh, we know it's of way more value to have uh, local suppliers who are just down the road. Um, we, you know, we're supporting each other in a sense and, and when there are problems or things go wrong, uh, they're, right, they're right there to, to help us um, get through and, and that's become something that's very important uh, to us at Burley Brewing. And you, you've spoken as well about the, the sort of the community that is building around around Burley Brewing. I mean, how important is it for, from Burley Brewing's perspective to create long-term jobs for locals within the, within the community? Mm -hmm. You know, well, as I said, it, it, it was a very um, key driver for us in even building the business. So, you know, clearly it's important to us. It's, it's going to be something important to um, other people as well. And look, I suppose it, it leads to a couple of things. Overall, when we first started the business, um, we were putting a plan into action. It was about us and our dream and, and making this happen. Um, very quickly, we, we realised, I don't think it was kind of one light bulb moment, but you know, suddenly we were um, seeing the business from a, a completely different perspective and that was way less about the plan and the product that we were making and more about the business as a, a, a contributor to the region that it was in, contributing to the heart of the region. Um, it, it could only exist with the support of the local community and we, we felt uh, a real responsibility and obligation back to that community to, to support them in the way they're supporting us. And I think that's shaped um, a lot of the activities um, at Burley Brewing and the, the decisions that we make and um, providing rewarding, stable, uh, local jobs for people in their own backyard has become, um, I've become almost as passionate about that as anything else uh, in our business and uh, it's, it's very motivating I think when you take the focus off yourself and what you're doing uh, and, and it becomes very rewarding to to, um, to be thinking more about things like that on a daily basis. In terms of Burley Brewing at the moment, you've obviously in the last six or seven years you've you've increased sort of products. Um, how much? Uh, what's the output from the the brewery like um, in terms of quantity at the moment? Burley Brewing is is what you would probably consider a, a large craft brewery, um, a regional brewery if you like. Uh, our production run is uh, about a thousand cartons a day, so it's about 9,000 litres of beer that, that is made in the, the brew house end of the brewery and on bottling days uh, we can do a similar output, about 1,000 cartons off, off the bottling line in a, in a six hour run. So uh, that's, that's a lot of beer really, <laughs> whichever way you slice it. <laughs> it is, and in terms of your, your product range, how many beers um, were you producing when you first started compared to now and how do you go about bringing new products on and, and keeping, I guess, a culture of growth and innovation within your product range? Mm. Uh, actually, I probably have to hold the boys back a little bit from wanting to brew new, new products. We started with, with three beers, which even that was a little bit of a, a challenge in a, uh, a new brewery in terms of uh, managing yeast strains and so on on the scale that we do. Uh, but we started it out very specifically with particular products that, that we felt would be a good introduction to the Queensland beer drinkers of, of um, uh, an introduction of craft beers and one, ones that enabled them to build a bit of trust in Burley Brewing in terms of the products that we were putting out. We weren't going to scare the socks off them right away with, with uh, crazy out there beers. Uh, but the process since then to build to a stable of seven core beers in our, in our regular everyday range uh, has almost been a, a kind of a, a journey of discovery that we've taken consumers on with us and, and gradually added a few different uh, styles that um, are perhaps a little further away from what people have known as beer for quite some time here in Queensland uh, and, and Thankfully, people are really uh, embracing that and seem to be enjoying the journey that we're taking them on. For those who've wanted to kind of skip over all that and get to the really crazy stuff, we, 
we kind of created a, a department within the brewery that's called the bit on the side department and it's where the, the brewers get to play around with flavours and, and innovation when, when they're not uh, doing the, the, the day to day stuff and we've put out some really fun um, products as, as limited releases uh, in, in those ranges as well. You, you touched on the point then that when you first started perhaps the, the craft brewing market in Queensland was very much in its, in its infancy. Um, one of the things that we learn from a lot of our members is they, they sometimes um, find it difficult to, to scale a business and to break into, into new markets. How did you guys go about getting your beer in the pubs and in the retail outlets within, within Queensland? Are there any tips you can, you can pass on to our members? Look, it's, it's definitely been challenging and when we wrote our business plan we kind of um, put I suppose venues and, and bottle shops and so on into categories of, of the ones that we think thought we could go after first and the others that might take a bit more work or there might be more um, challenges in our path to, to being able to work with, with others. Uh, I have to say some of the ones that we thought would be the easier ones um, haven't been. We've just in the last week, after six years in operation, managed to get draft beer into our local Burley Heads pub. So, um, look, that's probably one of one of my tips is persistence. We've, we've been uh, coming at it at very in various ways for for six years, and they've finally uh, managed to uh, to get there. Obviously, now big obligation on us to support that customer and justify their their decision for having. Uh, taken it on. Uh, flip side, some of the the, um, the ones that we thought, oh gosh, there's no way, no way we could have a conversation with those guys yet. Um, some of those have come to fruition. So uh, I, I think the other tip is to to not undersell yourself and, and assume that some things are beyond your reach. Um, if you believe in it, and you really tr truly believe you can uh, support the, the customer in working with them, then then go for it because you just uh, you just Never know. And in terms of Burley Brewing, award-winning organisation, you know, market share and growth, hopefully continue to grow for the for the, for the future. What's next? Oh, look, we're, we're always um, pushing ourselves, I guess, and and exploring new new things uh, that fit within our our uh, our business model and our ideals for the business. Um, we're as a as a business, we're not uh, aiming to take over the beer world by any means. We're we're uh, focused very much on the quality of our product and the way we make it, uh, and how we make it, and and what it's like to to work within our company. Uh, we certainly see more exciting things ahead for Burley Brewing, um, but if at some point it, it starts to look like we either need to uh, change the way we brew or, or there's in any of the things that we hold dear uh, in terms of quality and, and work environment and so on are in danger of um, well, being put in jeopardy, then we'll know that it's time to, to back off a little bit. Um, I guess that's something that's helped us. We've had a very clear understanding of who Burley Brewing is and what's important to us and that's made it very, uh, or it's made it much easier in facing some decisions when opportunities have come past. For example, uh, requests to export uh, our beer could be an opportunity for, you know, a one-off big contract of some kind. Uh, that doesn't fit with us having a strong local business that has some um, provides rewarding, stable jobs where we don't have to be going up and down with our. Uh, with our staff to, to meet short-term contracts and so on. So it's, it's very easy for us to say no to the things that, that don't fit and to keep focusing on, um, on really building a strong base of, of customers and suppliers who we can have fantastic relationships with. Fantastic. Look, the questions have been flooding in this morning, so I think let's move on to the, let's move on to the Q&A. Um, the first one in is from, from Lance, who's, who's clearly a fan. He says, great job, he loves the brew. He's wondering if you had a market opportunity when you went into this, or did you develop the brew and then take that to market? Mm. I, look, to be honest, I probably still don't know the answer to that. We, we were certainly watching the Queensland market 
from afar and it certainly we, we didn't really see that anything had changed um, that, that would suggest to us that there was already a market for craft beer here but what we did see was what was going on certainly in the states where we were uh, and in to a certain extent some other states uh, in Australia and, and kind of the rest other, other countries in the world and we just knew that at some point things would have to change and we wanted to be a part I suppose of of making that happen and, and helping the market to change sooner than later in um, in Queensland. I have to say it's been fantastic over the last six years to see how the Queensland market has developed uh, and in many ways for craft beer, you know, Brisbane's further ahead than, shall we say, some other cities who like to think they're always ahead of us. I would dispute that. <laughs> it's great to see we're, uh, we're leading the way. Look, a, a question's come in from Abby who says um, she thinks you've hit the mark with the styling and marketing for a, a Gold Coast brewery and wants to know really how engaged is the, the local community in the brewery? Oh, look, we have some fantastic support. Um, locally. I think like any um, small business though that doesn't have a big marketing budget, uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get the name out there and to build um, the awareness. We still of course meet people from just down the road who have never heard of us and, and on the one hand you, you kind of think, oh gosh, what do we have to do to, to get the word out? At the same time I find that very motivating. Because I think fantastic. There's still a market out there. You know, we haven't we haven't tapped into um, into all of it um, yet. Um, but um, look, overall, the the you know we've made a very concerted effort to be a good um, community citizen. Uh, I think that's helped get get the word out. And and in return, um, we have had some some really great um, support down there. Fantastic. Chris wants to know how long did it take to break into the major national retail chains and how did you go about achieving that? Um, look again, there's, probably, there's not just one step I think um, and, and how long did it take? Uh, look, I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly but I'd say it was at least a couple of years before we um, really got our first opportunity and our first opportunity in that regard was very small. Um, I think that the most important thing that, that we did that enabled us eventually to get there was from day one, you know, focus on the quality and the consistency and, and, and developing the whole story around um, Burley Brewing, not just in telling a story but in actually living it and doing it and, and um, those customers, you know, they're big customers and they don't want to be let down so they don't want to take on a product that they don't see as, as or that they don't have faith in. Uh, and that would put their businesses or jeopardise the reputation of their businesses. Uh, so we worked very, very hard to kind of um, prove ourselves, I suppose, and uh, and um, eventually be able to be in a position where we could uh, service customers like that, which again isn't isn't easy. And you wouldn't want to take it on before you were ready for it. Would be doing yourself a disservice um, because you wouldn't be able to uh, support support their needs but look we we it's fantastic to, to be in, in um, those chains um, obviously it's a huge part of the market um, we probably couldn't survive if we weren't but equally it's there's the you know the independent venues and, and little bars and bottle shops who are as passionate about craft beer as we are and and they're really helping to get our products and and other breweries products and the, the whole kind of market buzz and and happening and we, we say to people you know when when new venues come on board it's a bit like having more children we don't we don't have to spread our love thin you just make more love and we've got plenty more to make <laughs> fantastic we had a, a question in from from Peter who's uh, who's a keen brewer and is is, is looking for a looking for a job but um, I, I guess um, I, say, I hope it's not a technical question no. <laughs> I guess from that perspective, if there if there aren't sort of roles going at Burley at the moment, are there are there any tips you could give Peter on on how to get his foot in the door and to to you know build a career in the industry? Mm. Uh, look, our approach at Burley Brewing in terms of um, brewers uh, has been um, 
not necessarily, we, look, we want to have the best brewers, but we're not looking necessarily for the best brewers when they walk in the door to us. We're looking for the best people and we've, we develop them into the best brewers. So for us in terms of uh, qualifications and experience and so on beforehand, what we like to see is, is it, you know, it's not, it's not one clear thing, but to, to see that, you know, this person really is keen, uh, they've maybe done some, you know, for example, some work um, on a um, volunteer basis in a really small brewery or, or be a member of brew clubs and that type of, type of stuff um, and really, really know that they've got a, a passion for it, then we know that we can turn that into, uh, into the skills um, within our business. Um, so look, definitely do whatever you can to, to broaden your knowledge. Um, there are courses available. We don't see them as a prerequisite. Sometimes we have people do them after they start with us. Um, but definitely um, broaden your knowledge as, as much as you can. Um, and we, we do have casual positions on our bottling line. Some of our crew have started there. So uh, it's, you know, unless you ask, you never know. So <laughs> I'd definitely be knocking on doors, as, as many doors as breweries as you can find. Fantastic. We've got probably time for one more question, which um, we're just putting together now. And it's really around the change in output. So if you're at 1,000 cartons a day at the moment, um, what, did you, what did you start at? And what were the challenges with in increasing the production? Yeah, that, that was one of the reasons uh, we saw starting uh, as such a big risk and so difficult to do. We built the brewery of a size that we could grow into over the, the kind of our first five years of, um, of brewing life and so we went in with a, with a reasonably large system. Uh, so on the, the, the brewing end, it, you know, that it produces 9,000 litres of beer and it's done that from, from day dot. Uh, what has hap what has changed, I suppose, is is how often we're using that system, and and in order to use it more often, we've had to add fermentation tanks uh, at the other end of, of production, and we've had to do things like uh, increase the speed of our bottling line so we can get the beer in bottles um, faster and uh, with less um, headache, I suppose, wear and tear on our crew. Uh, so it's it you know we we. We had the plan to go in at a certain size uh, and it, a, a structure where we could kind of tack on a little bit of extra capacity to be able to, to grow into it. So, uh, you know, in the early days we might have only been brewing once a week, but that's certainly changed now. It's, it's, uh, it's an ongoing thing. But like I was saying before, you know, what Burley Brewing uh, is like to work within uh, is very important to us. So if it got to a point where we had to be running the system 24/7, we'd know that's too far. We'd, we're not re really interested in having people do the, you know, the midnight to two, <laughs> to, to 6 a.m. shift kind of things. So uh, we've still got things we can do to increase capacity and still keep um, Burley Brewing as Burley Brewing as it is. Fantastic. Look, that's probably all the questions we've got time for today. If we have any extras in, we'll email them through to you if that's okay sure. and uh, you know potentially we'll put them on a, a blog and we'll put them on the on the website. On behalf of CCIQ, look, I'd really like to thank you for coming in today and for Burley Brewing Company being part of our webinar and part of Queensland Small Business Week celebrations. Thank you for having me. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone who's logged in today. Um, I'm certain that Peter's provided with some fantastic insights for you to use in your business around passion, commitment and you know being involved in your local community and, and above all persevering when those times can be a little bit challenging. We've got some great stuff going on in Queensland Small Business Week. Um, Saturday is Buy Locally Saturday and it's not too late to get involved in this celebration of Queensland Small Business. So if you're out and about on Saturday morning doing your shopping, just remember to you know support those local independent businesses that really make Queensland such a, a great state. On Monday we've got a webinar with a leading global futurist, Sahail Inyatola. Now Sahail's presented all over the world and uh, you know is is one of the He's leading lights in predicting how change will impact on business. He'll be talking to us about the, the rise of Chindia and what will happen as businesses in Queensland move towards the Asian century. So please remember to sign up for that one. Again, it's another, it's another free webinar. On Tuesday, we're releasing an exclusive interview with Queensland Treasurer Tim Nichols, who's talking exclusively to CCIQ about the four pillar economy and what that's going to mean for small business. So jump onto the, the website ccq.com.au slash small business week and get involved or follow us on our Facebook page or our Twitter account and make sure you stay up 
We're up to date with latest news on Queensland Small Business Week. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to welcoming you on another webinar in the future.